The DSO 068. Uh, this is going to be unboxing and maybe some testing. I will not show the full build of this because there are some good instructions in here and you have to follow them. This is not a beginner soldering kit as a lot of other. They're not that hard to build, but I hope for me. But uh, you have to read the instructions because you're going to do steps, then you're going to stop, check some voltages and other thing, and then you keep on working because this takes a bit more application building and thinking. So what does it say in the box? DSO 06A. It says uh, 3 mega SPS analog band with a lot of nice numbers, 10 millivolts division sensitivity, there's a frequency meter that have a 5 megahertz range here, yeah, we see that, open 2 volts peak to peak sensitivity, uh, USB connection for firmware upgrading, and some kind of connection to the PC, I'm going to try that out, and at least going to see what's in the box. I will open it a bit and there are instructions as usual. One in Chinese, the black and white this time, that's nice. Let's throw that away and then one in English and an assembly guide too. That's an important one, so use the manual we put to the side. Here's the assembly guide. I think it's even two sides here. There are a lot of steps, here's a parts list and everything and we have nice instruction, colored everything, showing polarity of the components, how you're gonna put them, and how you're gonna do some power up tests and things. So I will not show the build because it will get quite boring. So just gonna show what's in the box and then the finished build, I hope, if nothing goes wrong. Here we have a meter in a plastic bag and we have Oh, they are dropping out. Well, yeah, buttons, the PCB, the screen is not so, oh, there's pins flying around. Let's put that to the side because we'll have that right now. The main PCB with switches and we have a lot of components and connectors and there are also some pre-made small boards when you're gonna solder on the main board. So, I think that's that, and we also have the probe with the protection box away. Well, that is. There's a USB cable for connection to the computer, I think. I'm gonna check what that does later. And the test, the oscilloscope probe. And as we always say, this does not replace a real oscilloscope but it's a fun little product product and uh, can use it for, as a mobile device I think that's my plan at least so I will start building and see where I end up just some thoughts about the build I haven't started anything yet but uh, I just sorted out things uh, not that strange but uh, this is gonna be front side with the panel and the knob and switches all the components you're gonna mount goes on the Backside where you see the big processor. Uh, that's not that hard. And if you want to do this, sort out all the components, check that they work. I have just gone through the resistors, the diodes, and the inductors. That might confuse you. Here are the components as I have a sort of amount. The inductors over here. They are the three components that look like big resistors. Inductors people think of coils, something that's big and winded, but they can also be nice and tiny. So that's just that. So if you're gonna do this, sort out your components, check with the multimeter that everything works, and then you can get to work. I ran into some trouble on the what we call it the Power up test number one. The first steps were no problem. I got five volts everywhere. But the second test, where I, you, do jump a visit jumpers over, and you're supposed to start up a processor, and nothing happened for me. So I did some testing in, and there's a small tip: if you close the jumper seven GP seven, 
you enable the buzzer so you have something to hear when you're powering up. Let's see, power. It beeps one, and then the bootloader should kick in and get two, two beeps. Yeah, this didn't happen for me. The red LED here is for the that's the charging circuit for the batteries. There's nothing wrong there. It's this little crystal. I don't know if it's broken. It was broken when I got it, or if I destroyed you in soldering. So I got my hands on some uh, bigger crystals anyway, but still 20 megahertz and some duct tape and solder it in. I'm gonna make sure it. I think it fits in here. It should be any problem for the space or anything. But that's my problem. So if you manage to get five volts working you can also check on the processor legs that you have five volts in correctly and it doesn't boot up it might be the crystal that's bad and my next problem uh, power up has, uh, has been working and now i have something nice on the lcd to look at but at the beginning i didn't have it it was basically all black and to change the contrast, there's a small potentiometer in metal down here, and I think I did, might be a bad connection inside the potentiometer or something, but I had to work it back and forth a couple of times, and then I had something nice to look at. That means something to look at, because it does not look that good. I don't know if you can see it, but, well, that is not a square wave. There are... Um, on the open wire volt and one volt input ranges, you can. I have put a small wire. First of all, let me explain that. There's a wire from the internally frequency system and it's over to the input. So I have something to look at. And you can adjust the inputs. Uh, it's all explained in the nice assembly instructions up here. This is how you change and adapt it to get the correct form of signal and. What you are changing are, are two small capacitors down here. Two green small capacitors, one for one volt range and one for the 0.1 volt range. And I don't know if I cracked them or if they are the wrong size or something, but I do get really nasty input signals. So I will try to get some new capacitors and get back to this project. So this is soon going to be the end of this video, but I have a small tip more and that is in the instructions down here is a big scheme of all the powers and as it says reference voltage you can take down here that's the zero point take it down here there's a lot of metal and then you can check that you all the voltage are correct before you start to searching for faulty components so this is then for now and i will be back with the next part later see you